Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the afternoon session of day four of the Mums at Work Network Ignite Challenge. Hope you're doing all well. You did your challenge this morning and you enjoyed Alison Matthews' talk this morning, my fellow VA hero. So this afternoon, I'm going to talk about some of the videos that you need to be doing or should be doing in your business. Um, and so my name is Gail Alexander. I am the VA and founder of Ava Alexander Virtual Assistant. And like I said, I'm also a co-founder of VA Heroes and I. Um, and I also work with Lean in Belfast and Young Enterprise. And I specialize in video for all those different <laughs> organizations. Um, so I've been a VA for about four and a half years now and specializing in video the last three years. I have worked with SMEs, clubs, uh, female entrepreneurs, um, other entrepreneurial businesses, and I help them with a whole range of things to do with video. So editing, filming, helping them to do their own videos, how to do them and give them ideas on where to place them. So whether it's going to be on their website or on their social platforms or wherever the else they're going to use them. And so that's what I'm going to talk about this afternoon. First of all, we want to talk about why is video so important? Um, and especially now, in the current climate with everyone not stuck at home but everyone or a lot of people at home uh, juggling working from home homeschooling even and whatever other responsibilities they may have video has been a massive um aid to many businesses to reach their clients and also to deal and work with their employer employees employers employees and so I just want to go over a few statistics. Yay, statistics. But this just reinforces why video is so important um, at the moment. And so studies from HubSpot, um, Smart Insights, and the likes of Wise Isle Online all show the dominance of video content as being king in a marketer's arsenal, or queen, or emperor, whatever. And being the primary form of media used within their strategy. And also, according to Cisco last year, um, by this time this year, video was to make up 80% of all internet traffic. So I don't know about you, but I do watch a lot of videos online. In fact, a lot of my TV viewing is actually either YouTube, Netflix, or even Facebook watch, any of those new up and coming channels. And so it's a great way to reach new audiences and clients um, using video and those different platforms. Also, mobile marketing magazine states in the UK, adults are spending more time and more than a quarter of their uh, waking day online, which is quite a scary thought. And this is the highest on record. And again, with like new services coming up like TikTok and of course Zoom, we see an unprecedented growth. And according to Ofcom's latest study, report revealed that um, by April 2020 of this year, during the height of lockdown, UK adults spent a daily average of four hours and two minutes online. And that's up from three and a half ours from September the previous year. So you only need to look at the growth of celebrities as well, jumping and participating online and in new video things. So like TikTok um, and doing challenges and YouTube and creating their own content. And so when you think of the likes of Rod Stewart and his daughter, they created like an impromptu concert as well as the group of celebrities, I think it was One Nation, um, came online a couple of months ago to do a long concert with different performances. And then also John Krasinski, Emily Blunt's husband, um, he created his own YouTube channel called SGN, Some Good News, basically wanting to tell a story of, you know, what everyone was doing in lockdown. Um, but the good news, because all we were hearing for months was the, the numbers, the figures going up and up and up, and it was, yeah. wasn't was great watching or viewing. So this is what he created as well, and it was fantastic, the stories and the jokes. And the celebrity he's also got on board to, to uh, join him, so the likes of Brad Pitt, did the weather 
But it just shows, you know, these celebrities understand the currency of video. And again, probably a, a very well-known is Joe Wex, the body coach doing P with Joe, which I did do myself. Um, and then again, Maddie Motes and Greg Foote from CBBCs. They produce their own TV show from their spare bedroom, um, Let's Go Live. And it was fantastic. It provided a daily piece of content for kids around different subjects. And they did this, they did about 50 shows. And then lastly, sort of the examples of Bruce Willis and maybe Kate Beckinsale, if you've seen them on TikTok, doing these silly wee dances or twerks or whatever. It's really amusing. But they are doing this because they know the value of raising their profile. These videos demonstrate their profile or their expertise, authority and their status as influencers and has Bruce boosted their brand just showing that you know Joe Wex has now signed a new one million pound book deal but this is what video has done for him and his brand so why do we need to do this and we know the elements of marketing um, and sales when it comes to video it's we want to attract educate retain and entertain so that forms the basis of the type of videos that we can do so how can we do this well first of all the reason why you want to do a bit more videos because it's probably easier you can do it a lot quicker and when you think that people buy from people you know they're not necessarily specifically buying the service from that person they do have the option of buying services and products from other people but quite often it comes down to the person that they're buying it from when you come across a video they want to know a bit more about you feel engagement with you uh, you know a rapport with you and nowadays it has gone from seven touch points to about 27 touch points before somebody considers purchasing with you. So with that many ways to have to try and reach your clients, potential customers, video makes it quite easy in some respects if you're doing live and short wee clips of videos which are very easy to do along with the more produced organized um, and edited videos so how can we do that well first of all you can think about live videos so think about your day you know what what have you learned what have you done that day so if you think of the likes of instagram stories you can do wee videos on that and you just demonstrate well i've done this i've done this and then doorstep video we had the doorstep photograph um a lot of people were maybe getting branding shoots and photographers obviously weren't able to go into their house to photograph them so the, the the trend was that they did it on their video and there were some really lovely ones of um entrepreneurs and business owners having branded professional photographs on the doorstep Nothing to stop you doing a video one too. Um, also sort of a behind the scenes of your business. So what do you do every day? How do you do it? The order of what your day is, especially for me, um, mine can be very different from day to day. You know, are you in the office? Are you out of the office? Is it a combination of both? People are really interested in that. They want to understand what it is you do and how you do it and to see the value and quite often, you know, the ethical nature of what you do they want to understand that process also what about um, doing live videos where you're talking about events happening right now when you think about um an event going on so you can post at the very start of it and think about that you can still come along and join in i was thinking about it i was meant to be at the dalriada music family festival this year we weren't able to go but they live streamed it online so we could watch it from our own back garden and we camped as well and watched it that way and it was still great and hopefully we'll be able to go back this year but it was a way to keep that momentum keep that going keep it in people's head and make people feel a part of it and the same with glastonbury again they showed clips of previous years with the presenter radio one presenters radio two presenters in the fields of glastonbury farm all socially distances and talking about the events that had gone on but they were showing clips of those videos and reusing which is another great point you can always reuse your videos so live videos fantastic once they're live, you can download them and reuse them again. So you can use Facebook Live, Instagram Live, YouTube Live, Periscope. There's many others um, that you can use. And the tools that you would use for this would be your phone, your iPad, camera connected via cable to your laptop. And the likes of through Facebook, Zoom, StreamYard, Wirecast. The list is endless of tools. I want to say that when it comes to video, lives give the highest engagement of video content. And with Facebook, this is shown to more of your customers. When you go live, quite often there will be a pop-up saying, oh, Gail's going live in this group. So you can click it and go straight away. So you're not going to miss it. Uh, the famous algorithm 
tends to show your video to more people out of your audience than say a post or an image because what a lot of people don't really realize that what you you create in your page and in your groups doesn't necessarily get shown to everyone that is a member or everyone that likes and follows you it's only shown to a short percentage or a small percentage of those um, customers and so you need to create content that Facebook like and then they show it to more and once more people watch it then it's shown to more so that's one thing to think about live it tends to be best one thing with live is I think um, you're more likely to get it done <laughs> you're less likely to put it off because if it's live it's going oh my goodness right I'll just do it here and I have quite often done it in the supermarket or even in the car just to do a short post to my group and you're less likely to faff about and fix your hair and do your lighting and done is better than perfect because you need to be there you need to be with your customer or be visible to your customer so often but so consistently doing a live video helps to avoid that kind of gap it also shows the real face behind the business behind the corporate branding per se so live is really good just get over it you are creating content for your customer not for you they want to see and hear what you're about we don't really care what you look like it's you know what you're providing them what you are going to transform for them how are you going to solve a problem for them if you can get that across through live video much the better so the next uh video type i want to talk about is an explainer video so this is probably the more common one the one people will think about so it's explaining a product or a service or even an upcoming event and this can even be done live or pre-recorded or then set for a premiere watch event which will help create a buzz for that event so you can obviously put your post beforehand go i'm about to go live come and join me at eight or i'm about to have a watch party about this product service or whatever is coming up so you can do both with that and also it can demonstrate the benefits of buying whatever it is you're buying so you're explaining you do the maybe the live beforehand saying hey come and watch me i'm going to be on at eight i'm going to be talking about this fantastic new product you do not want to miss out so then you've got those two extra touch points so one's really quick and easy and you can just jump on anytime and do it and then the other one's the pre-recorded more polished version and again you can do it from your phone your tablet you can be done from anywhere just make sure the sound is good the lighting great you want to see your lovely face and my lighting could be slightly better but because i'm recording from my kitchen as opposed to my office space because my husband's there um the lighting here isn't the best it could be but if you can ring lights are great or even small attachment lights um it's really really important and also for stability if you can prop your video device or put it on a tripod and you don't want to be shaking about too much unless it is specifically you're walking about okay next type of video would be customer testimonials and everyone knows the importance of testimonials this is what a lot of people look for. You know, once they look at the product, oh, yeah, I like this. Okay, I want to see what people say about it. So they'll look at their customer testimonials. Why not ask your customer to do a video? Um, and they can do it on their phone. And that's perfectly acceptable. It doesn't have to be a completely highly polished video. And it's much, much better unedited as well, because then people can see the real person and the real truth behind what they thought of your product and service. Another type of video would be Q&A. So when I talked about one of the channels that I do watch is Facebook Watch. And so if you've heard of the Red Talk Tables with Jada Pinkett Smith, how, they, how Jada comes on with quite often her daughter and her mother and bring on guests to talk about topics that are relevant. So they talked obviously quite extensively about Black Lives Matters. They also talked about um, even stuff that's gone on in their own personal lives in the press. But this has really raised their profile, Jada's profile specifically, because they view her as an influencer, a voice to be listened to, and they see because she's opened up, literally opened up quite a bit of her life to her audience. And they also are able to attract some um, guests like Chelsea Handler, Snoop Dogg, Demi Moore onto this. So in your own business, not talking about getting um, the likes of Zac Efron onto you know, a video, somebody along your business or somebody in a complimentary business that can come on and say yeah i use your product and i use it in this way or i bought this and it complements my service and just discuss and um, the benefits and 
why it was great to have this product at that time. And it, it's another kind of way of doing a testimonial. A few more of those home examples, we shouldn't forget to mention the BA today, which is my own channel, where I specifically talk to other virtual assistants from around the world, talking about what specifically they did, what their niche or niche for the Americans, um, they specialized in and why it was so beneficial for people to work with a virtual assistant. So again, it also acts, this Q&A acts as a educational piece for customers if they're not entirely sure. So you could even do it one-to-one, -one, one to the camera, where you can have people have written in or contacted you with questions about your product service, and you can answer these online to the camera. It's a great way to explain more about what you do. So another one that you probably have thought more of is do your advertisements. You know, online ads, they don't just need to be flat images or um, text. They are increasingly being videos and very easy to be done. You know, one of my favorite ones that I saw recently was for artgeo.io and it's relatively new to the stock image scene. And so they've created a really fantastic pop-up ad that will pop up through whatever you're watching on say YouTube or Facebook or online. So quite often if I'm watching um, one of my favorite YouTube videos for van life or boat life, and there's a couple of videos in between, it stops and one of these videos come up. And so again, birch.com is another great one. And they're very short, snippy ads, about 30 seconds long, 20 seconds as well. And they're basically bright, colorful um, and it ma along with the music which you can also get from stock images and it really catches the attention so birch.com she explained how she people didn't know how vibrant flowers could look and so obviously there was different ways of showing the flowers the changing colors and with artgeo.io it showed what types of stock that they offer so also advertisements obviously are gonna be for events and services. So you can go online and do an advertisement talking about, we have this great event coming up, don't miss it. And um, you can get your tickets here, this is what's gonna happen. So people have a sense of FOMO, fear of missing out. They don't wanna miss your event. So you can show previous clips from previous events. And again, with your products or service, you can say, show where, really struggling with getting my business to run smoothly on one side on a split screen video and then on another side you've got this guy that's really flowing through his work he's got all these automations set up and it's going while he's working away and he's stress-free so that's the transformation that your service or your product provides that person it can show the side-by-side -side comparison and it's pretty s simple to do having two videos and push them side by side using like canva and other um video tools film or wonder shares so advertisements yeah obviously a great way you know it's not just for your tv but also for your social media platforms or websites um and anywhere you have an online presence. Another one that a lot of people don't tend to think about is a personal thank you. Now, obviously, if you have thousands and thousands of customers, you can't do this so much, but when you're a growing business, this is something that is incredibly valuable and people remember great customer service. So quite often, if you get a personalized email asking, you know, how did you enjoy our product? Can I help you in any way? You do appreciate that, why not do it by video? Or even just a short thank you for purchasing or working with us and adding it into that email as well. And it's the same with voice as well. You can do it and you can record voice messages. People actually, especially in this time, that sort of social human interaction is so much better than just a flat message. If you can record a message, whether it's just voice or your video, people really, really appreciate it. And there's one way of doing that. You can attach a video or a GIF uh, to WhatsApp Messenger, Facebook emails. But one I like is BombBomb um, is a great email service. It, it means you can provide a video message and it's compressed in a way that it doesn't take so much um, data usage up that when you send it, up, uh, your client can't open it. But it's highly personalized and very, very, good way of connecting and generating those warm leads or converting to sales. Um, personalize 
personalization is an increasing growing tactic done by marketers and when it's done right and done well it reaps massive benefits and keeps your customer satisfied coming back for more so, so a couple more videos go over um internal videos say you've new clients coming board um or you've new staff coming board you can provide videos that you've recorded and how to do something this is the way i want it done and so you can pre-record that you don't need to sit there and then the your client or your employee they can go back over these instructions these videos instructions they don't need you to be there so it's a great way of being more efficient in your business another video um, would be user generated content there is nothing to say you can't repurpose somebody else's video as long as you credit it and say this is um, a person I follow I think it's great and share and tag them especially on Instagram Facebook but make sure that it is credited to them and or even if it's some of your customers, say you have a video sent and do it by a customer that's using your product and going, I absolutely love this. This is how you use it. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a paid thing. This can all be done um, because people just really want to talk about the product. You can reuse that again and go, hey, look, even our customers think so. Here's a video stealing it. Now, if they are paid to do it, you have to say this is a paid for advertisement. But also if there's something they've said that you agree with in your line, your industry or what's going on in the event, you can repost those videos and make a comment on it saying, oh, Sophie Ellis, she posted this video and you know what? I agree with this. I think this service would be such a boon to kids, whatever it is. Um, that's a really great way of increasing your video content. Uh, another one I'm gonna talk to you about is blooper reel. You know what? Who doesn't love a blooper reel of <laughs> their favorite TV show? Who doesn't love seeing those mistakes? So show those several takes, even if you're pre-recording. You know, you can show them at the end. Like and people really love them because it, it gives a sense of attachment, really invites your customer in to show that you're human as well. Even if it's a live, just go with it. So if your son decides to come in while you're filming, just go with it. You will know the the videos where newscasters and news reporters are having to report online from their home and their kids are running in the background. People love these and people talk about them. That's the real thing. People will remember them and talk about them. So I'm gonna go over two more quickly. Uh, a day in the life. Now we did touch on that at the start, but it's how do you do your work? You know, people want to know exactly how you do it. So show them your sewing machine. Show them your wax melting station or your chocolate tempering station or your film setup. And so like, I mean, hi, I've got my cameras my phone my ipad my green screen but show this to to um your customers they want to see how you do things and it also shows your expertise it shows that you know what you're doing it's fascinating to the audience people are inherently nosy well not everyone but i know a lot of people are and they really love to get a little bit further and it builds up that relationship because they know more about so, you if they want to know what you're doing or how you do it, they will sure as heck want to know what you use to do it with. You know, what tools do you use? So demonstrate the sewing machine, the type of sewing machine it is, the bobbins you have, your the overlocker. <laughs> Show people that this is what you use to make this product. They may want to try it themselves, but quite often, you know, they'll still come back to you or they'll come and ask you how to do it, you know, or show them the the apparatus you use. So I would show them, you know, what type of microphone I have, what type on my camera or on my iPad, what type of tripod I have. Also, you know, what yoga mats you maybe use or what stretches do you do yourself? You know, if you're a yoga instructor, a personal health and um, personal fitness instructor, what do you do in your business? How do you do it? So what do you use? People want to know exactly, well, if they look like that, or they're able to do that, how can I do that? So again, if you're a makeup artist, how do you clean your brushes? What products do you use on your face? So it's all your kit, your gear. People want to see that. So there's a lot of different there's videos I talked about there that you can be showing a bit more to your customers and clients. And there's some quick and easy tools um, that you can use. So again, we've talked about Zoom, but you've also got Skype, GoToMeeting, Periscope, StreamYard, Filmora, Wondershare, DaVinci Resolve, Wave, Loom, Screencast, 
headliner, Vid, Vidyard, Ucut, Be Live, Clipomatic, Otter, Rev.com, Toonly and Place It. Some of the tools that you can use and they are for filming, live streaming, editing, transcription of your services and animations to su support those your video creation out there. So things to think about would be subtitles, closed captioning. Now, one, this is for ease of access to people with hearing loss, but also we know increasingly how much people watch videos with the sound off because they're having a sneaky look while they're in work or whatever, they're on the bus and they don't want you know to impede on anyone else's journey home. So closed captions, subtitles are really, really important to, to do. So another thing to think about is your hashtags that you add with those videos. So if they are going to go on social media, you have to think about the relevant hashtags and the number of them. So for Instagram post needs up to 30 and at least 15, but in a story, in an Instagram story, it should only be three. After that, they are not used. This is how people will find your content. They will find you for, through search terms using hashtags and the like. And in the same respect, your video title is so important. It needs to have a hook. People want to know quickly why they should watch the video, what it's going to do for them and what they're going to get out of it. So think of clickbait and what hooks somebody in to watch. So your video on your side, if you don't have enough video, you can always look to the stock libraries, which I talked about, and you can add to your recordings um, to make them look more visually or audibly appealing. Orientation. So think about whether you want it horizontal or vertical. No, I've done that wrong. Horizontal. <laughs> horizontal or vertical um, and this is dependent on where the video is going um, and also your segmentation and platform so they kind of go together so say you're doing a vertical video they are great for the likes of TikTok and your smaller audience that's the way they're going to want to see the video and on that platform but the likes of Facebook or even YouTube you're going to do it horizontal so your video length you need to think about is different per platform and the purpose of it you know is it a short clip is it a longer informative video is it a training session so your video is going to vary depending on the purpose of the video and where it's going to be placed and how to brand your videos do you want to watermark them even if you need to it's great to add your watermark, how you're gonna do it, especially if it's something that the video itself is, you know, your product in itself, that's highly important because you don't want people to steal that. And then lastly, probably the most important is your lighting, sound, background, and your framing. But lighting, talked about that a bit earlier, you really want, if possible, to light. And if you can't get any decent light, try and make sure that you there's natural light that'll light up your entire face. People want to see you. But make sure that that lighting isn't gonna change during what you're saying, because if you're gonna have a shadow fall through it, especially if it's live, there's nothing you can do about it and it makes it really difficult. Sound, again, is incredibly important. If you're gonna repurpose your video and use it as a podcast, sound is imperative. And if it's not great sound, people can't hear it, people don't wanna watch it. As well as your background, so an unbusy background is fine enough as well. You want it to look appealing, but you don't want it to be distracting. Then lastly, framing. Framing is really important. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can either have the decapitated head or the ceiling shot, where quite often you would, if you're doing it on a phone, your, your camera image, your camera lens is below you. Plus fact, it's not the most flattering, but it's making sure you're framed correctly because when you do it that way you're seeing more of the ceiling and it's wasted space what you really want to see is if you think of the rule of thirds you want your sort of eyes to be up in the top third and the two finger rule which sounds weird but it's not um if you can two fingers on your on top of your head not rabbit ears but like this and that should be the only gap between you and the top of the screen because that is just dead dead space up there nothing's happening going up above your head. It's all going on down here, especially if you talk with your hands like myself, but people want to see that. It shows that you're genuine. So that's um, some of the things to think about. So whether it's just for your story or a post or your website or even an email, there are video options for each and every one and they're quick and easy to do. Video really helps to increase your visibility um, and build on that no 
like and trust factor and building a long lasting relationship with your customers. So just remember, get on and start, whether it's on your camera, your laptop, your webcam, your phone, your action camera, your iPads, film it, go and do it, post it. And I hope that was useful. Thanks very much.